Hi, Nick here from Technology Lowdown. Today we are looking at a password manager which I like. It is a password manager that's predominantly designed for use within Teams. But this password manager, which is known as Passbolt, it's been designed centrally around Teams. It is free and open source uh, and you can self-host it, it's extensible. There are a couple of different levels of how you can use Passbolt. Say, for instance, you can buy it and you can get support for the product um, or you can get their hosted version of it. In our case, we'll be looking at the free community edition of Passbolt, which is has similar features to what uh, the startup business and enterprise ones do but it's it often gets the features a lot later than uh, the startup business and enterprise features they, they do come eventually but it may not be straight away say uh, this is what we can see here so the community edition unlimited users and you can share your password so that's good uh, there's online documentation but where it's limited is you're not getting an admin panel which is promised for the other um, versions um, you're not getting a dark theme um, and just just small things but it still makes Passport a useful application so why do you need a password manager well a password manager um, allows you to comfortably implement best security practices and therefore reduce the risks for you and your organization it can decrease password reuse it implement password rotation and increase password strength and it just saves the hassle of someone having to call you say if you want holidays um, and ask you for the password to a system because it's only stored within the file that you keep on your phone with your passwords which is probably not the best strategy in terms of security and keeping your passwords in a file on your phone so here's some of the features of passport we've got um, uh, so so far we have these features in Passbolt which include API documentation uh, there's some features which are only in the Pro but you can import your passwords you can export there's an API for it uh, and there's uh, you can have groups to share passwords with say how this would work is if you were to have uh, several passwords associated with social media you could share these with your marketing officers but not with your IT support personnel so this could be one way it could be used here so we're going to get started on installing Passbolt on your Raspberry Pi so you want to go to ubuntu.com download IOT Raspberry hyphen pi hyphen two hyphen three. The URL is in the address bar here. I'll put all the links I use in today's show in the notes for this video for your reference. So you want to download Raspberry Pi 2 and then you want to follow these instructions on installing that onto your SD card. Okay, so I've got Win32 disk image downloaded here, which is the one that uh, Ubuntu say you should use. So I've got my image selected for my Raspberry Pi model three. I'm um, just opening that one and I've got my uh, SD card selected here. Uh, we'll just go right. Yep, continue. Oh, that's the wrong one. I'll just start again there. Right. Alright, so that's writing to the card there. Um, so while that's writing, I might just mention that um, Passbolt at the moment doesn't have a mobile application. So that put a bit of a damper on Passbolt. But it does have a browser plugin. And in their roadmap, you can see that they do actually have... A mobile app promised um, so that you can uh, access your passwords uh, through your mobile phone and this feature should be coming to all versions of Passbolt. Pause this video for now and I'll come back once I've got this SD card installed in the Raspberry Pi. Alright so that image has written to the SD card now I'm going to stick this one in the Raspberry Pi and you will need to connect it to a monitor because there's no way out of the box to set up uh, uh, your Ubuntu installation to have SSH access out of the box without connecting to it and installing OpenSSH. So the default password to log into uh, your Raspberry Pi with this image is Ubuntu and Ubuntu. When you first log in it will ask you to change the password so do that. Alright so first of all we're going to do a sudo apt-get uh, update and then we'll do a sudo apt-get upgrade. So that update for the Raspberry Pi took about 15 minutes. So now we need to install OpenSSH uh, server onto the Raspberry Pi. So to do this, it is sudo apt-get install OpenSSH uh, server. Okay, so once SSH server is installed, run ifconfig, 
and then find out your IP address of your Pi. All right, so once you're installed, if you go to uh, help.passbolt.com slash hosting slash install, there's then a link for Ubuntu 18.04. Now the version that we are installing in our Pies today should be 18.04 or uh, above. The command to install, you need to add uh, the repository universe, so we'll add that one in. Pretty sure it's already there, and then we'll uh, do another update. Now to actually install Passbolt on the Raspberry Pi, the creators at Passbolt have provided a simple install script. All right, now we are executing the shell script. Now we want to install it uh, a local MariaDB server on the machine. Just go yes for that one. If you have your own database that you want to use, you could certainly do that as well. Just select no, and then you'll be prompted for those settings. Now you want to set your passwords for these systems and your username. I'm just going to use Passbolt and I'll use Passbolt again, and database name, Passbolt. And because it's a Raspberry Pi, we probably do want to use this feature. So we will say yes for this one. For your host name, if you don't actually have a DNS name for this one, just enter in the IP address of the Pi. So I'm going to select auto and let's encrypt will issue that one to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so you can see that it's now installing those OS dependencies. And this setup script will take a few minutes to install. But once it is installed, Passbolt is ready to be set up in the web browser. All right, so Passbolt has now installed in the Raspberry Pi and you can see here it says to go to this URL. So I'm going to go to that one. Uh, I'm not on the secure side at the moment. There was a bit of an issue during the install. It didn't uh, authorize the Let's Encrypt certificate because I didn't actually point it to a uh, host name, uh, such as a registered website address. So um, that is something you need for Let's Encrypt, but that's easy enough to do. As long as you have a domain name that's pointing to your IP address of your server, um, then that certificate will actually come through. In this case, you don't actually have to have it, but if you are actually using this in production, then yes, you do want an SSL. In this case, I'm just going to set it up using the wizard now, um, which it directs you to after the installation is finished. So we'll start that installation now. Start configuration. All right, so it's going to ask for those details of what database you're using. I'll enter in those details now. In fact, I can actually enter in the uh, local host address. And the port is fine. Passbolt. Uh, enter the password I created and Passbolt as well. Uh, give it a name, your server, so we'll call it uh, low down. We'll give it an email, webmaster. I won't add a comment, that's all right. And just all the default settings here are perfectly acceptable. All right, so now you need to configure some email settings so that when users are created, they get the email that they need to advise them on the account being created. So you want to get these from your internet provider or you just set it up to point to your uh, own website's uh, mail server settings. All right, so I have my email settings entered in now. That uh, base URL is fine. Allow public registration. No, I'm not expecting any. I don't want users to add themselves to the system and I'm not going to force SSL for the moment because I don't actually have SSL enabled at the moment. So I will enter a name for the administrator. All right, so that's installing. It's setting up everything that it needs. After this, it should direct us to a page where we can uh, then get the browser extension for Passbolt. Okay, so as you can see here now, it's come to this uh, page for getting the plugin. So I'm going to download that one now. And that's opening up. I'm going to add that to Firefox. Add. And I'll allow it to run in private windows. All right, so that's added there in the corner. Now I'm going to go retry. All right, it's detected we've got that extension installed. It's directed us to Moz extension. And I've checked these details are correct. That's fine. Now you want to choose your password very carefully for Passbolt because at the moment you can't actually change your password to Passbolt. So once it's set, you cannot change it. This feature will be coming at a later point but it currently isn't available at the moment. Now on this 
screen, it asks you to download your secret key. This is very important. This file allows you to recover your Passport account. If you don't have this file, then all your passwords are not accessible if you have created them. If they've been shared with others, then they still will be accessible. So we'll click next on that one, and now we need to select the color. This color is for ensuring that you're connecting to the correct server. So it says over here, the visual cue will be shown whenever we ask you for your passphrase and other sensitive places to make sure you're dealing with the authentic pass bolt dialogue. So as long as you recognize this color when you log in, then that means you're all connecting to the correct server and you haven't been directed to the incorrect, incorrect one. So here's the login page. I'm just going to log in. All right, and Passbolt is all set up now. So I'll give you a quick run through here. So we've got uh, create, and we can create a password to a website. So let's go Google, and we'll add in a website address, com.au, oh, we've got a username, technology, uh, low down, and I'll just enter in some random password here. In fact, I might actually just generate one. All right, there we are, there's a generated password. I uh, give it a description, Google account for YouTube. I'm going to go save. And what that will enable us to do is if I click on this link and then I click on the extension, it's just come up here, enabling me to log in with that account. Thanks for watching this video on installing Passbolt onto your Raspberry Pi. If you have any questions, please comment in the description and I will answer them in future videos. Um, I don't forget all the notes for this video are in the description so you can easily follow them for installing Passbolt onto your Raspberry Pi. For further information go to Passbolt.com and you can download Passbolt to your own Raspberry Pi. If you've liked this video please like it, if you'd like to see more please subscribe and don't forget to tap the bell for notifications. I'll be releasing a couple more videos in the days and weeks to come also.